As light comes from this candle, may the blessing of Jesus Christ come to us, warming our hearts and brightening our way. May Christ our Savior bring life into the darkness of our world and to us as we wait for his coming. Beloved in Christ, as we await the joy of Christmas during this Advent season, let us prepare ourselves so that we may be shown its true meaning. Let us hear in lessons from Holy Scripture how the prophets of Israel foretold that God would visit and redeem God's waiting people. Let us rejoice in our carols and hymns that the good purpose of God is being mightily fulfilled. Let us celebrate the promise that our Savior Jesus Christ will bring all of humanity and all things into the glory of God's eternal realm. Let us pray. God of life and peace and music and prayer, we celebrate your certain promise of the new world to come. We rejoice in anticipation of your servant Isaiah's vision of a promised light coming into a dark world. We shout for joy, exalting you with all our hearts. Help us to prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. Illuminate our waiting and watching, our praying, thinking, and our acting. God, giver of inexplicable joy, bless our community, real and virtual, 
that as we hear the story in word and song, we may celebrate aright the incarnation of your love in the person of Jesus. And through us, may the whole world know your saving love. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 62, and you're invited to join in beginning on the second verse. Love is a gift of God. Love is warmth in a world that is often bitter and cold. Let us pray. Source of light, shine in our lives and in your world with your unending love. Through Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen.
Well, hello everyone and welcome to West Plains in-person worship for the fourth Sunday of Advent, our service of lessons and carols, and I extend a very warm welcome to those of you who worship with us online. Last week I lifted up the excellent financial results that Marilyn Fox and her talented team of bakers accomplished during this year's Christmas cookie sale. This week I want to do the same for our amazing crafters whose beautiful wares have raised so far well over $3,000. So take a metaphorical bow please crafters, you're amazing. Um, this is the final week for the crafters display in the Narthex. So if you have need of a last minute gift or two, make sure to pay that display a visit. We also, of course, continue to be thankful for the ongoing fiscal support to the mission and ministry of West Plains by so many of you, both in person and online. And just a gentle reminder, uh, the fiscal, the financial year at West Plains ends on December 31st. So any funds for which you might desire a tax receipt for 2022 will need to make their way to the office in advance of that date. With the unbudgeted expense of the roof repair this year, all such efforts are, of course, enormously helpful. Christmas Eve worship will take place this coming Saturday at 4 p.m. Worship next Sunday, Christmas Day, December 25th, will be online only. But it is our hope that it will be deeply spiritual and also delightful. So I encourage you to make room for it as part of your Christmas celebration. The service will be available on our YouTube channel on Christmas morning. The Gordon and Shenna families continue with their cornucopia of celebration. Mary Ann's birthday is today. Many happy and healthy returns, Mary Ann. And that is followed quickly by Jennifer's birthday, which is on Tuesday. So congratulations, Jennifer. And a further important community, community celebration will also take place on Christmas Eve, December 24th, which is Ray Mifflin's birthday. So congratulations in advance, Ray, and we hope you have a splendid day. There are several opportunities for you to sing in the lessons and carols section of worship this morning. Although the choir will stand to sing, uh, we'll encourage the congregation to remain seated for singing in that portion of the service and the hymns will not be announced. So follow in your bulletins. The service does tend to move quickly. And now let us pray. In the dark and the dreaming, in the aching and the longing, in the waiting and the wondering, come to us, holy child. May your word be born within the womb of our lives. Amen. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy right. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth 
to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and wondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her.
In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem. Because he was descended from the house and family of David, he went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Mary sits and rocks her Jesus child, while amid the treetops sighs the breeze so warm and mild, and soft and sweetly sings a bird upon a bough. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is this child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at his rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least upon, among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star that had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, 
and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger.
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now into Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, 
and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth.
pray. God of life and love, receive our gifts this day as tokens of our love for you and signs of our willingness to share that love with the world around us. Bless our lives as well as our gifts so that we may be a blessing to others for the sake of the Christ child, our savior and friend. Amen. Let's gather our hearts and minds in prayer. God of star and stable, you lead us to wonder and to hope. You gather us together to hear your promise of love. As we gather, we offer our concerns and our dreams, our hopes and our fears. Like the shepherds who sought the stable, we seek your promise of peace. We pray for your people broken by violence, those who live with fear and those who live without hope. Support them, Holy Presence, with your courage and your peace. Like the wise ones who dedicated their gifts, we remember those in need. We pray for those who are lonely, hungry, or forgotten. For all those who are ill in body or in spirit. For those who are confused or afraid. We pray for your joy and love for all your people, especially those adversely affected by the pandemic. Holy One, you came as a child offering renewal of spirit and of living. May our prayers be a new beginning for healing, for truth, for trust. May we embody love that is forgiving, compassionate, and gracious. May we send back the angel's song of peace and joy. God of all life and each life, we lift up before you the names of those in our congregation and beyond it in need of your healing love. Remembering, especially at this time, Bessie, Jan, Joan, Marnie, Haley, Lawrence and Tilly, Danvers, Lois and Linda, Anna and her family in Ukraine. As a challenging year comes to a close and a new year beckons, come to us, abide with us once more as we celebrate Christ's birth. With the tenderness of your spirit, lighten our burdens and show us new possibilities for our lives and for the ministries we take up in Jesus' name, where we find confidence in the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. Our concluding hymn, Joy to the World, Voices United, number 59, verses 1, 2, and 4. For the benediction, I want to say a profound word of thanks to Leanne Tan and to the wonderful singers behind me. You're awesome. Let us go out into the world proclaiming that we have seen the glory of God, believing that there is a light that shines in the darkness which the darkness shall not overcome. And may the love of the Creator, the joy of the Spirit, and the peace of the Christ child be with you this Christmas season and evermore.
try to take a picture by the Christmas tree. <laughs> I don't know, with the choir. So if you're up for it, if you might want to um, gather tall people around the tree and we'll, we'll fit in here. And my friend Lizanne, will you take the picture? 